Hi, today I'm gonna talk about estimation techniques. I have scope. I should be able to arrive at cost or I should be able to arrive at how much time it's gonna take based on the scope. So um, we can use estimations to arrive at, as I said, schedule, um, total time or cost. There are four different ways to arrive at cost or schedule. I can use analogous estimates. Analogous are typically top-down estimates. When I have, um, when I'm at the start of the project, your sales guy come and ask you how much time it's gonna take for this particular project. This is the scope. Um, so you don't want to spend a lot of time on looking at. Um, what are different components and things like that because you're not too sure whether the project gonna come to your product to your organization or not at that point of time it makes sense to do analogous estimate what are those um, just do a similar so you look at the similar project of the past you look at the scope at the broader level and you come out with somewhat inaccurate or you're somewhat similar um, estimate for that particular project and because you um, are looking at only at a high level your sales guy kind of put in more padding or much more um, you know percentage as to cover for any inaccuracies so that's analogous we'll get into a lot of detail um, in the next set of slides the next one which is exactly opposite of analogous is bottom up bottom up is when i look at the scope let's say for dinner party i would come out and say okay what is what is that component i want to have in dinner party what are different drinks i want to have what are different um, appetizers i want to have what are the main course do i really want to have sweets or not would i be cooking at home or should i be ordering from outside so i do all of that uh, discussions I do breaking down of the scope and then I come out with you know for each component I come out with the cost or I come out with the time so I can apply these techniques to arrive at the overall cost for my project or for um, applying I can apply it while estimation of the um, time so um, bottom up because i'm doing a whole lot of breaking down of the wps along with my team it takes it is it takes more time but because i have i've been looking at risk on each wps item i've been looking at the um, you know skill set of people who will be doing it it becomes more accurate um, but the condition for this is it requires a good wps in place the next one is parametric parametric is when i do calculations when i would look at okay what is um what is that which i need to do so if i need to have one plate prepared uh, the one plate or one person gonna cost xyz amount of money so if you go to a restaurant or um, if you go if you are planning a party for your team typically you go and call up the or you go or, or you call up the restaurant and you ask them it's been a long time now since we are in covid but i hope the time gonna come back um so you ask them uh, instead of giving me each and every dish um, if these are the certain dish you're gonna put for my party how much would be per person cost and the restaurant owner gonna give you a per person cost you know he would he probably would say 40 dollars or 100 dollars per person include inclusive of xyz um menu so um because he's been there in this business for a long time there are a lot of historical data with him and um, with this historical data you can come up with per person cost um, if this guy is not there in the um, if the historical data is bad the calculation goes haywire 
So for parametric estimation to work, you need to have good historical data. Let's look at the next one, um, which is three-point estimate. Now, as the name suggests, it is three-point estimate. What does it mean? I use three points to come out with the estimates. Um, what are those three points? To um, elaborate further, let me give you an example. I used to um, stay at one location, which is part of um, India, um, part of NCR region. And this NCR region has um, a place called um, <clears throat> Point A, let's, let's be not specific, which is part of Uttar Pradesh. Um, Microsoft Office was in Gurgaon, which is part of another state called Haryana. And I had to travel between the another state called Delhi to reach here. Now it's it's a bad situation. Um, so my boss asked me, Kavita, how much I know you stay very far off. How much time does it take for you to reach to office? So I told him. I looked at him actually, and I said, Hmm, um, good question. So. I've been I've been held up in a lot of traffic jams and I have faced a time when I have I have taken some around three hours to reach home. Um, in the morning if I start early, I have been lucky enough that I reach within one hour. But typically uh, it I would assume that it generally is 1.5 hours to reach. Um, so what did I just gave him? I gave him three point estimates. Um, the three hours is a pessimist estimate, estimate when things can go wrong. Um, one hour is optimistic estimate when everything is you know falling in place timely and 1.5 hours is most likely estimate. Um, when can I use three point estimate? I can use it for large projects when I have regulations to abide by, when I have stakeholders who's going to ask me by when would you be completing this bridge or this dam or this roadways project. So instead of giving an absolute data saying that it's going to be finished in 40 days or it's going to get finished in three months, you don't want to do that because things can go here by. So you want to run with certain simulation and you would want to give a confidence level. What is confidence level? I am 80% sure that the project would be completed within this much of budget. So that's that can be arrived only when I have three point estimates um, and I use simulation software. Now because I'm using three point estimates, it takes time. Um, but it is worth investment of your time because um, then nobody's going to come and catch you that you have said 40 days. You said 80% confidence level, this much of duration or time and this much of cost. So, analogous estimation. Analogous are also called ball par figure. Um, these are less costly and less time consuming because I'm not elaborating on the scope. It can be applied to total project. As I said at the earlier part of the project life cycle to arrive at the overall schedule or to at the time of sales part of the project. Most inaccurate. Um, but it justifies itself because you're not putting in a lot of efforts in coming out with analogous estimates. Bottom-up estimate is extreme opposite. You're putting in a lot of effort to detail down the WBS. It is time consuming, but it becomes very accurate. When do you want to do it? When you are starting off with a phase. Um, so at this uh, starting of the phase, you would want to look at each WPS item. You're going to be planning for this particular phase, overall cost or overall schedule. At this point of time, you work with your team and elaborate the WPS and say, okay, um, these are the points, what are the risk item, who's going to be doing it, what is the total cost and so on. And you arrive at a good 
um, estimate at the start of the project at the start of the phase um, so this is uh, this can be used along with what is the other term rolling wave planning what is rolling wave planning you guys should know this um, the other name for rolling wave planning is called progressive elaboration you're right parametric estimates um, are um, as I explained earlier it uses some kind of formula to arrive at estimates um, the formula can be um, so there is this organization which I work with I consult them um, and they are into catering business they they you know serve uh, the dishes um, big organization now there is a there is a project going on in this organization wherein um, they are standardizing the um, ingredients of any dish um, so if let's say you are preparing a dish called pizza for one person what are typical ingredients which gonna go if you are doing it for 10 people how much um, would gonna go and how much is gonna obviously cost and how much time it's gonna so because the things uh, the, the organization is moving towards standardizing the entire stuff there could be certain deviations but um, when we move towards when you have a lot of data um, in the earlier past and you know your chefs are trained then you can come up with um, you know how much time look at dominoes they guarantee you 30 minutes dominoes at your home because all of that is standardized um, so parametric estimations are arrived at by looking at um, the WBS items and looking at a formula to arrive at the overall cost so um, per square footage is one example in construction you can arrive at okay how much square foot of the floor you need to put in as wooden carpeting so the carpenter gonna give you per square it's gonna cost you this much and it's gonna cost you it's gonna take this much of time you in software industry also give similar kind of estimate to your customer when you say um, for this skill set how much um, the per person cost per hour gonna be $50 per hour so these are parametric estimate because we are we have arrived at a formula in case the base uh, OPAs are wrong then the formula can go incorrect so um, we need to refine the OPAs again and again to arrive at a better estimations the next one is three point estimate these are um, what are those estimates we had pessimistic we had optimistic and we had most likely now these are three point estimate to arrive at expected duration or one estimate it's called expected duration or expected cost we can um, use two formulas the first formula is triangular distribution or also called average distribution what is it um, look at this triangle we have um, this is pessimistic this is optimistic and this is most likely now to arrive at a formula it's very simple we say optimistic plus pessimistic plus most likely divided by three and i arrive at the expected duration or expected cost mm -hmm. some companies or some industries say that it's not as simple as that my chances to arrive at most likely are more than um, pessimistic or optimistic duration or cost um, so these industries um, typically your industry may also fall under that wherein estimations fall under beta curve so this is the most likely estimate curve and this is 
pessimistic or optimistic and this is again pessimistic or optimistic if you look at the area contained most likely contains more area than the pessimistic or optimistic so um, beta distribution uses a different formula to arrive at expected cost or expected duration what is that formula it says because most likely takes more uh, chances per distribution calculation becomes optimistic plus four times most likely plus pessimistic divided by how much because we are giving weightage four times here one here one here divided by six um, what is the full form of PERT program evaluation review technique just remember PERT is equivalent to beta distribution and triangular distribution is also called average dis distribution now you might have questions in the PMP exam that what is the expected duration if we calculate using PERT what is the expected duration if we calculate using triangular and so on so just remember the terms and the formula summarizing um, there are four type of estimates the first one is analogous this one is most inaccurate the second one is bottom up which is extreme opposite of analogous it is most accurate parametric using uses calculation correct only when we have good opas or good baseline data um, all of that all of the estimation techniques uses certain you know baseline data or opas um, but for parametric it becomes really really important uh, three point estimates uses three point scale and then um, there are expected duration or expected cost there are two ways to arrive at it beta or average that's it let's do let's play